Hello and welcome today. We're going to compare this brand new Snow White and Seven Dwarfs Lego set up against the Flintstones and the Winnie the Pooh treehouse as well. Now we've got a lot to get through. Box artwork, instruction booklets, but of course the majority of the time is going to be spent on the sets and the minifigures themselves. So as this video progresses, in the comment section below let us know what your favourite set is. Are you thinking of picking this one up? I will at the very very end of this video do a lot of comparisons with regards to scale because this set itself is surprisingly large and it has an unbelievable amount of detail so we'll go through all of that and of course like I said we'll cover all the minifigures as well but in that comment section let us know what your favourite set is, let us know what your favourite minifigure is from each of those sets and if you're going to pick any of these up or after watching this video backtracking some of the older sets. <laughs> So we start off with the front of the box artwork and with regards to box sizes because they are all completely different sizes. And I think the Flintstone one stands out a lot, lot better than the other two on the shelf. But if I was to place you down just for a second and stack the boxes in front of each other like so and then pan you back up, you can now see just how much smaller that Flintstone's box is compared to the Winnie the Pooh box and then behind the Winnie the Pooh box you then have the new Snow White. Now that Snow White box now looks very very big where in store it doesn't look the biggest but the set is absolutely stunning. So because the Flintstones is the first box we will take a good look at this very very quickly. Now all the boxes are very very similar with regards to what is at the top. So you can see just here the top left hand corner we have the Flintstones and it is Lego set number 21316. You got the ball ball and the pins which are included in the set and then you have I slide the box across you do then have all four of the main minifigures included but there is no Bam Bam and there is no Dino which is a little bit of a shame but if that is stood out on the shelf you can just see how nice and bright and vibrant this is now if I stand it on the side this way you can see that it is super super bright and vibrant with the yellow and that is what that would look like side on on the one side and if we spin it all the way around we can then see what it looks like at the bottom and again it is exactly the same on the other side so it was hard to miss this set in store and what i do is we'll have a look at the back of the box artwork at all of them at the same time now if we go straight into the winnie the pooh this box has seen better days you can see the beautiful minifigures that are included in this now before we actually look at the minifigures if i was to do this like that minus the bit at the bottom if you were looking across the top, it is quite hard to see where the one box finishes and the next one starts because they are now using this much darker artwork. Whereas if you just now do this as a complete direct comparison, I really do think I would like them to go back to the much brighter, vibrant colours, but I think they just stand out on the shelf that little bit better. But that is my personal opinion. Let us know in the comment section what you guys and girls think, but we will carry on with the Winnie the Pooh. So obviously one thing that they do do is they do change this bit across the bottom. Now this was, like I said, Lego Ideas set number 24. This is actually another Lego Ideas set, which is number 34. So if we again come to the very, very top of the box, just like the other one was, in fact, if I make you one level lower, like so, we have then got very, very similar bits and pieces because you have got the Lego Disney logo on the left-hand side, and then you have the five beautiful minifigures that are included on this. We will be taking a very, very good look at all of the minifigures later on, either in hand, or we'll be taking a look at them on the Lego website, depending on how easy it is for me to find them. And then you have got the hundred acre wood with obviously the honey pot up at the top and it does look very very nice with all the prints and the stickers that are included with this now if i slide you down that way you've got the really nice top of the box artwork with the winnie the pooh and then you have got the one-to-one -one honey just on there now with regards to if this is stuck on the shelf side on you have just got that so there is a big big difference between the two so there you go so obviously that's a bit of an easier understanding of what the size of the box is like. This is much, much fatter, but this is much skinnier and bigger. So I don't know which is easier for the staff to actually get on the shelf, but I really do like that. I'm a fan of bright colours, but I think it just stands out much, much better. But again, if we were to spin you all the way around, that is the bottom of the box. And then as we come around to this side, it has the really nice Winnie the Pooh logo. I knew it was somewhere on this side, which I do think is a beautiful looking thing. So it's a really, really nice drawing. And there's a lot of really nice detailed artwork within the instruction booklet, which we'll be taking a look at in a second. Sticking with the side artwork of all three boxes, we are now bringing in the new big one. And you can see if I just keep panning up and up and up, 
you can see the difference with regards to the size of the boxes. So if you are thinking of getting this set, it is quite a big thing. But if you are looking at it on the shelf from a side on point of view, that is what you need to look for for all three sets from that side. And on the other side, it's a bit of a letdown because again, we know that we've got the Flintstones on the one side and we have got the Winnie the Pooh on the other. But if somebody put this set side on on the shelf, because this is actually the tab that you cut open, there is absolutely nothing on that box to let you know what set it is, which I'm actually very, very surprised about, to be honest. I thought they would be putting more and more bits and pieces on, but obviously, going by this comparison, they're not. But something they have kept the same is adding all the minifigures to the top. And on this one, they've added in all the names as well, which is absolutely perfect for somebody like me, because I have absolutely no idea who any of these are. But you can see the facial expressions are very, very dramatic on these sets. So we'll take a good look at all of these because obviously I have all of these ready to hand. So we'll be going over all the different outfits, different colors, and all the different tools and things that they have. They do look very, very good together. So we will be taking a good look at that. Now, next thing we need to have a look at is the back of the boxes before we move on to the instruction manual. But as we quickly have a look at the back of the boxes, you can see at the top of each one of these boxes, all of the minifigures that are included. So it do look quite cool together. So if you do like to collect your boxes at least you can have a good look at this now we have got quite a lot to look at with regards to all the different bits and pieces but again the super super bright vibrant colors of this one really sells this to me and you can see again all of the different bits and pieces that we're going to be taking a much much better look at on this but i just really like all of the sort of colors they've added into this and everything else like that because if we go straight from this to uh, this one you can see just how much darker this one is but again the slight difference as we go through them this one does have the size on the box so with regards to the sizing on this one this is nine inches tall or 24 centimeters eight inches in length or 22 centimeters in length you then have some different scenes that you can see with Winnie the Pooh himself and then as we come through and come back down again this one actually opens up from the back so all three of these are completely different and actually how the box is open Open are also completely different now if I place you back down and move this one over to the side we can now see just what we have on the back of this we've got all of the different bits and pieces going straight into the sizing sizing on this one we are 14 inches in length or 35 centimeters and it is 8 inches in height or 20 centimeters now you have got the different bits and pieces that is obviously from the cartoon itself and then you have the other scenes that you can see and do. It is very, very clever when you start to build this one up. And obviously it's got the light brick included. So with regards to how you actually get into the box, they are all different, like I mentioned. But this one, you actually flip open from the front. So it's like an old school shoe box. And I have kept all the bags and everything on the inside ready for these sorts of comparison videos. But again, if I place you down gently and prop you over like that, in front of it, just here, is the instruction booklet with the exact same image of the box artwork which is always lovely to see now because these are lego ideas sets and they are special sets as well you do have i do believe in all three booklets a meet the designer so we'll go over this very very quickly so you can see you've got the meet the fan designer on the left hand side and then you've got the meet the designs on the right hand side you can see you've got the bowling pins and all of those different bits and pieces on there and you have got the other bits and bobs now so funny that they've got bam in the name but they didn't include it in the set which is a little bit of a shame but we have got all about the flintstones on the left hand side and then on the right hand side you've got biofax and did you know and it does look quite cool with obviously the cartoon strip on the inside and you've got all of the different bits and pieces just on there but I can't turn the page until we read the main thing, which is in 1960, the Flintstones hit the TV sets of America on primetime TV for the first time time so you can see it says at the bottom the lego flintstone set has been created in homage to the television classic so there's lots and lots of different bits and pieces like i said to read on this and then from there we just basically crack on and then there's just bag number one is the vehicle so that is a cool looking thing which we'll be taking a look at then we have obviously got bag number two three and four and then five and six and then now we get going so that is nice and simple on that i don't think there is oh there might be there might be some other lego sets on the back sometimes they do sometimes they don't no but at the time you did have these three so you had the book the uh c set and voltron which is a beautiful looking thing so that is the flintstones artwork done
So quickly moving on to the Winnie the Pooh. Now again, this is the same style box artwork. You open it up and you have got all the spare pieces in that box and I've kept all the different bits and pieces, but there is a big difference between this one and the other one. So again, if I place it down, plonk the box there, the instruction booklet. I think the box artwork should have been this instruction booklet colour because I think this is a beautiful looking thing. So there's quite a bit to have a look at on this. As you can see, as we come up and over, it is a really, really nice looking front of the booklet. And again, you'll have all the different bits and pieces in there. There's a spare piece that's gone rogue, but you have got the nice map on the left hand side. So you can see you've got all the different bits and pieces. If you follow it through, you've got Piglet movie, you've got um, all the other little bits and pieces. You've got the 100 acre wood, and then you've got the gloomy place just down in there. That is a very, very beautiful drawing. And as we pan over onto this side, you can see you've got the Winnie the Pooh himself, and then you've got a little bit of a story, and you have in the beginning the, the Endless Adventure, which is in first publication was in 1926. Now, as we come over, again, you've got more really nice artwork on here. So each one of these booklets, again, are completely different. Like I said, you have got Welcome to the 100 Acre Wood on the left-hand side, and then on the right hand side, you can just see some more pictures and it carries on with that story. Now, as we come through, there's even more because you have got all about the best friends and you've got Eeyore and Piglet up on this side. And then on the next page, we have the Meet the Designers. So you can see you've got the family there on the inside and that is what the original set used to look like. So you can see you've got all the different figures up at the front and that is their interpretation of the actual Winnie the Pooh house. And obviously that is then what it turned into. Now with regards to what is left in this book, we carry on and then you've got the Meet the Design team. So there's quite a lot going on on this. We are multiple pages in with regards to the team. Obviously they are sat on the Lego house steps. And then you have all of the different interviews with the designers up on that side and then the build starts so it's first four bags there bag five six seven for what you see and then that is it so it's just that so you've got the two two divides so you get all of the minifigures in the first four bags now with regards to what is at the back of this booklet you have this really nice artwork as well which again i think looks very very smart and i much prefer this to the really darkness of this set but as always you have all the pieces on there and then you have a little bit more ideas information now, with regards to lego ideas on this set you had all of these were available that one has just disappeared so that has just been discontinued at this christmas just gone and then obviously you've got sesame street and then you've got the grand piano as well which all three of those did look very very good now it is time to tuck into the brand new snow white set so with regards to how you open up this one, you just cut this one open. It does not have the thumb push tabs on this one. So if you are worried about that, you don't need to be for whatever reason, I couldn't care less. Now again, with this, you can see you've got the nice, bright, vibrant color. It's against the white rather than against the black. To be honest, both of them stand out nicely. So the black actually works okay with this one. Um, and the white works okay as well, just because I think how bright and vibrant the rest of the set actually is. But as we start to tuck in to this set, we have quite a lot to look at now you have got some different bits and pieces because they are obviously going to go um, bagless to paper soon with regards to what they're going to be doing on that kind of thing and over on here you have got the once upon a time with the original comic and cartoon should i say sorry or the movie um on the left hand side and then you have got the meet the designer on this one over we go you have got the cool little film strips all across on this side and again on there and you can see as we pan over it does say an icon in the making over on this side so it's pretty good looking uh, booklet on the inside of this but that's it so that is it so there's a lot to look at with regards to the set but with regards to actually any history of snow white because it's not a lego ideas set that is all you're getting from the lego ideas designer because normally they don't really tend to do too much normally you just tuck in and open up but it's just those pages so it's a big difference with regards to if it's a lego idea set or not because this is not a lego idea set i should have mentioned this and this is item number 43242 and it's 2228 pieces get it in better late than never so you go to tuck straight in i'm quite surprised actually because on bag number one you get snow white and the prince straight away so bag number one you build that all the other bags you then build that and then the very last bag you then build the tomb and then you get a minifigure basically in every single bag now if we go all the way to the back you can see just on the back of the booklet you can see you've got just this as a little stamp across the back and then you've got all of the pieces and i do believe after we go through all the different languages which for some reason 
there are multiple languages of because you have a battery on there with regards to the brick light. That's it. So they don't actually offer you any other sets that were out at that time, which I never understand why. I don't understand why they just don't put the rest of the Disney sets in. But talking of sets, I think it's time we get them on the table. Now I think these two side by side look at absolutely stunning we will go over these all in detail and i will do a full comparison of all three on the table at the same time but you can see for the first time all three of these are together and you can just see the size difference now of all of the sets now with regards to this set it finishes height wise there so I put the Ninjago tin just there so it's easier because I know the box is directly behind it. That is the height of that set. That makes it a little bit easier for you. Not exactly the most professional, but it's helpful. So I think those three side by side look great, but these two as a display piece, I think they work very, very well. But we will tuck into all three of them. We'll, have, we'll strip them all down, have a great look at all the detail, and then we'll go over all of the amazing minifigures after. So as we start with the Flintstones, we'll carry on that way. Now this is the smallest set by an absolute mile. You got to take this with a pinch of salt some of these sets are absolutely battered there's been a lot of damage to that tree i'm not going to explain where this actually was and why this piece is missing because i have tried to explain myself far too many times now this comes off super super sturdy nice easy thing to take apart and it is a good size chunky roof so you've got some nice bit of detail on there now i think the main detail on this actually with regards to the building is all of the chimney on this side i think that does look very very good and very very effective this works well with regards to in the display i don't think it works perfectly well with the, against the other two but i think it's just quite nice if you are trying to backtrack this with regards to wanting the characters and things i think you know people might start getting itchy that's why i have included this one now in case you did know this one actually opens up so we have got a little bit to look at not a huge amount but enough so if I get you down and get you there so that should be a little bit easier for you to see you can see on here this is where you've got the bowling pins and the bowling ball they will come out you could easily tile this bit in the middle and then you can obviously extend this ever so slightly up in the middle you have got some little bits of an easter egg so you can see up at the top just here you've got the nice little artwork in the photo you've got a nice little bench that they can sit on you then got the bowl and then you have got their tv now if you can see on the tv if i pull this out for you look who is missing so i get my arm out the fact if i get my arm out the way and get that there that should be bright enough for you to see so you can see that is on the telly so i wish we actually did get this one as a character but we didn't because it would have been quite nice to have the head poking through the actual window now talking of windows and doors yep door opens up easy enough and you can see you've got the nice little bits of detail on the side you have obviously got these cool little curtains here which are effective and you've got the really bright vibrant blue door but with regards to scale i think it looks very very nice it looks nice on the shelf and if you can fit it in a display which i am going to be fitting this into my theme park display i think this works very very well Moving on from the Flintstones on to the Winnie the Pooh. Now this does look very, very good. You can still get this from certain websites, but it is a retired product on the Lego website. Now you can see just how much taller that is compared to the Flintstone set, but I think it does look very, very good. So if we place you down on my makeshift tripod and then we move on, I say tripod, it is a limited edition Ninjago tin. We'll get the minifigures out of the way. Now I didn't add all the stickers to this on purpose because I had a bad feeling I was actually gonna end up ripping the sticker on the instruction booklet. So I've still got the sticker sheet. I just need to put on one or two of the stickers. Now again, it's a little bit battered, but it it is what it is these sets get moved around all of the time they're never going to be perfect because i actually move these around all the time if you've actually been watching what i've been trying to do in this lego room but the really nice thing about these is these are prints so if you wanted to get yourself just some honey ones of these just to add in as a little bit of an easter egg if you can't backtrack this set you might be able to find this element and then you can just add it in to the snow white set now this was a really nice build it was a while ago when i did it but you can see if we go just from the bottom to start with there's a lot of nice detail on this so again with the door you've got the knocker the door is a pull on this one rather than a push for the flintstones it's a little bit dirty but i am not going to lose sleep over it lots of detail on the side and again you've got all this really nice detail on the windows 
roof looks very very nice and effective with regards to the layering on that and then you have got all of those really nice lily pads which do look great and when we get to the next set which is the snow white set they've got lots of brand new elements that we'll be taking a look at as well now as we come to its back side and then we part it open there we go we have got all of this on the inside. Yes, that was as dirty as it was meant to sound. We have got all the beautiful detail on the inside. So again, you've got the nice chair, which does spin round. You've got the honey pot. You've got all the other little bits and pieces just on the inside there and those beautiful looking windows. Now, as we come through into the middle, you do have room to stand a minifigure on the inside just there if you wanted to. You have got a mirror and an umbrella. So if I get that round, you should hopefully just here be able to see there is a mirror I will zoom in hopefully that will pick it up for you so if I do that da -da, you can see all the little bits and pieces on the inside you've got the teapot and then you've got the cup and the other little bits and pieces and then as we slide it around on sort of what is the base level on this so I get that to there and then zoom back out again so you can see you have got the nice bed and then you have obviously got all of the nice lighting and everything just on there now there is almost like a secret roof compartment on this set as well which is always nice and handy because if I take you up onto the next tier you then have got these things up here so obviously you've got even more honey pots on that side which again do look very very good and very effective and then on this side it is a sticker that I did add you have got the poo sticks and then you can see just how beautiful that is now again yes the roof does angle so there is on the little hinges so if you want to angle the roof and do whatever it is you want to do with that you obviously can do and then the detail carries on with regards to the height of this tree now there is quite a bit to have a look at that is a little bit higher up so now you are a little bit higher i can spin you back around to the front and we can just take a very very quick look at the top of this tree now because within this tree we have got lots and lots of elements in here and then if you look we have got a little nest just in there which is a sweet looking thing and then as it comes up you have got lots of other detail so there is a beautiful beautiful looking thing if you are trying to backtrack this one i'll get on it sooner rather than later because i think the price on this is just starting to skyrocket so something you won't have to worry about shooting up in price for a little while is this beautiful brand new cottage i think it looks gorgeous and i think they look very very good side by side as well but because this set is brand new to me and it has only just been released we are now going to spend a large amount of time looking at all of the different details that that has to offer but there is a full comparison video of this set and the flintstone set in a different unboxing video so this is the first time i've displayed all three of these together on the table and i think they do look very very good you can see all the trees and everything there in the distance where we tuck into that in a little bit because that is actually a separate piece but the first thing that we're going to look at is the first thing we build which is this thing just here which is a nice looking thing so you can see it is completely covered in the violet color lily pads which do look very very good you've got the same thing on both sides so that's nice and simple and you get all this really really nice detail down both sides it does look very very good indeed now you do have within this set we're gonna have to display pay and display all of the different animals because we have got one there and there are some hiding in the background so you've got all three of those and they get dotted all over the place and yes that is a bird in a bird box up at the top so we have a lot to get through that's why this is going to take quite a while but we have got the really really nice detail on the roof now the cool thing about the roof is you can angle it depending on how you want to angle it because you have again got all of this detail at the very very top which i think just works and obviously you can add more in you can take it away you can do whatever it is that you want to do you do have new pieces in this set i do believe which we will be finding sooner rather than later now you have got the bucket and obviously you have got the little wheel up at the top if i can actually get the light on it so you can see so if i did that you should be able to it might be a little bit dark there is up oh, there it is there is a wheel just there so that is where that is so that's a cool little build it doesn't move but i'm sure you can customize and do whatever it is that you want it to do and the nice thing is if i could rip the roof off the base is actually blue so there is an element on the inside of here which makes that blue so when you look into it it does look very very nice now with regards to minifigure scale because this is one of the minifigures you do get given and no i haven't put his cape on for a reason because when we actually look at the minifigures in greater detail it just makes life a lot easier that is what that looks like when he is stood just there because for some reason both of these are included at the very very start on this one i again not actually seen the film so there must be a reason why that is the case but you can see just how that works and it is big enough 
to stand him on both. You can obviously hold the water and then you've got all the other little bits and pieces on the other side. So with regards to a minifigure scale, everything works absolutely fine. Now talking of minifigure scale, this thing. We'll move on to this thing next and I will be grabbing Snow White in a second. Now this does look very, very effective. There's quite a lot going on with this actually. So you build this up, it's the last thing you build and it's quite a cool little build. Um, we will go on to the big bugbear that I've got and I found this on the actual website and I thought somebody had built it wrong. There's absolutely no way to hide that red Technic pin. Normally it doesn't bother me whatsoever, but you never see them normally. In the white tree, you can't see anything, it's got all the sleeves and it's all covered. But for this, for some reason, how you put this tree together, you've got this little piece. Now this little bit just is not long enough on this side to cover that. And if I raise them all up, it shows the red elsewhere. On this side, because you don't have that piece, it's all fine. So I'm not too sure the reasoning why they use that element. At the same time, I don't really care too much, but it's just quite unusual for something to be on show that much, because I genuinely thought it was either a mistake or it's supposed to be part of the film. But forget that, forget that to the side. I just want to make you everybody aware that I have not built it wrong. There's nothing you can do on that one, and there is one more. Now, I think these are new, or they're new to me anyway. They're not included in the Rivendell set. These pieces here do look very, very smart. Now, these, I do believe, came out in the Rivendell set. These elements just here. I might actually grab part of the Rivendell trees to show you what that actually looks like once we've gone through the set. So I do actually have that to hand. So I think we might be able to do that potentially and the A-frame cabin trees as well, just so we can make it a bit more decorative, just so you can see how that scales with all the other little bits and pieces. But with regards to this, yes, Snow White is supposed to go in there. I will grab her in a second because I'm yet to try it. So I'm not actually 100% sure how you do it. But if we were to pop these off, you have got, they're not stickers, they are printed snow white elements. So again, if you wanted to grab yourself some spare ones of these, or there's something that you wanted to do with them, you do have one on one side, and then on the opposite side, you do have it again on the other side, obviously. So that is the opposite side, because it's the other side. So I've just popped those pieces back on, because I did not want to lose it. Now you've got all the nice detail going across the bottom, and as we spin round, you can see you've got all these really nice little bits and pieces all up on the top just there, which I think does look very, very effective. And again, you can display this nicely from the back, but you can also angle them. You can do some little bits and pieces. You can tilt them if you want to, so they don't have to be fully upright. So again, with that, that is what that would look like from a little bit further out. So you can do some nice bits and pieces i think you can obviously do some nice photography with this if you say for example use the a-frame trees and you did some different bits and pieces with that i think that would look very very smart now with regards to how this comes apart you just pop that bit off so that is as simple as that it is on one of those how you get the minifigure in there is something completely different because obviously she is on her dress but you do have the sleeping face so it will be rude not to try it i don't imagine you're going to be able to just slide it in because she can't well she doesn't fit does she so you have to take the top piece off lie her down like so so that is what she looks like in there and then i am hoping that should with her arms going down just fit on. Doesn't look like it's going to, but it should do. So that's how that should work. All right, there you go. That's it. So you just need to get the arms flush. Plonk that back in like so. It will clip. There we go. That's it. So it's all back together. So proof it's all there and that is a weird and wonderful looking thing so again if you want to get you some photos of that and you wanted to have her sleeping in this thing that is what that looks like and to be honest that's probably where I keep her so she does not get lost so uh, we can have that as a tourist attraction which will be a bit weird but then at the same time they do have that at Legoland Windsor and you do have the prints stood over the top but you can see just how easy that is to add the minifigure in and again from the back and if you want to see some nice photos that is what that is going to look like and I think that does look good enough. The only problem is I now need to grab her back out again to do all the minifigure comparison stuff but on to this thing now because it's an awkward size I can't get all of it in shot if I do I have to be quite far away but I want to be close enough so you can actually see all of the detail but we'll go through I think top to bottom on the outside first and then I'll place it down and then we'll go layer by layer 
all of these are prints, which is very, very handy. The stickers, there's not that many. I'll, sh I'll overlay the sticker sheet now as I'm talking about it. You can see that there's not that many stickers included, which is a great thing. The stickers that are included are actually ones that you would not want to buy as a tile, but all of the other little bits and pieces it makes sense and the reason why. Now you can see you've got all this beautiful detail on the roof. That was by far the longest thing to build. It wasn't massively repetitive. I thought it was gonna be really, really repetitive. It is completely different to say something like obviously the Rivendale, for example. You do have lots of different elements and lots of different things going on with it. Now with regards to all of the different trees and everything like that, they are obviously all layered and you've got all the different textures within. Now if I place you down and I'll get you there, we will just go across the bottom as a 360 now that be a little bit easier so if I clip it together yep clip it together it then stays together so you've got all of these different bits and pieces up at the side so here for example that is where you have the other tree where it has the red bit it is kind of hidden on that one because of just the shadow and then you can get the really nice angle of the roof again it does look very very good and it does look very very effective and then as we pan round that is a better look at the side of the roof. And as we're coming down, we'll take a better look at the side and the bottom. Now on here, like I said, absolutely no idea what this is all about. Something to do with some dodgy mining and then you have all of these gems more than likely stolen, let's be honest. So they are probably all horrible, horrible people stealing away as we go. I'm obviously only joking, but you have got some really beautiful colours. So you have got in here, you've got the clear, the red, the blue, and then in this rucksack just here, you then have the green, and then you have got the other different elements and bits and pieces that some of the um, characters can hold on to. Now, I don't know, I don't know what to look at first. There's so much to take in. I think if we just carry on with the roof, because when I can take a piece off, it'll make it a little bit easier to move it around. So we will go round this way. You can see you've got all the nice detail on the front door. Hopefully that's coming through clearly enough. And obviously that is a push front door to open. You then have this nice little element just here. So that is a nice looking thing just up at the top. And then you've got all of this detail around. Now we've just had a quick look at this tree, but in the tree you can see you have got the bird box just there with the orange noggin. And then on that side, you then have got the blue bird with that as well. And these, how you make these up, are very, very effective. So you've got all this nice detail across the door. And again, you've got all this really nice detail all wrapped around the window. Now, carrying on with the really nice detail, place you down, spin you around. These here, again, I've just filled these up with some of the characters. So some of them, when I show off the minifigures, won't be holding the bits and pieces because I've got them in the storage. But on the outside, it's actually where you use the light brick. Now that light brick is pretty cool and we'll get to that in a second. Now on this side, again, you have got some nice detail with regards to what you're gonna be looking at with the tree. And then from the tree, you've then got the nice chimney. So that does look nice and smart. and It does look very, very effective. Now, before we get to the back, we will get to the side. So you can see how that works. Now, with regards to this, there are two things you can do with this, which are pretty cool. Now, hopefully I do it the right way. This opens up like so. I got very, very confused when it came on the LEGO website with regards to how you can actually display this. So you can display it closed or it opens up as an L, which will then allow you to take a better look at the inside and the back. So you can basically get it from different angles, which is very, very helpful. Now, the other thing that you can do is this panel, he says, you can't see it. This panel just here is removable, just like the A-frame. So you can see how much that is built up. It is a very, very clever thing. So you can, if you want to, have that permanently off and then you can have that displayed with the side open, which potentially you might have to do if you have it in a clear case display. Now, as we now start to pan round, we will now be able to see all of the different detail that is hidden just on the inside from here before we then start to tuck into the rest of it. So you have got the bedroom. So you can see you have got six beds and then the one in the middle, which I do believe is dock. Now, the only reason why I know that is I had to make a dock reference because of Jay's Toy Collection UK. Jay, that is your reference from G.I. Joe Livestream. Now you have got that and everything just in there. So you've got the nice windows 
and then as we come through, you're going to get some nice photos of that. I think it's going to be very, very photogenic. It is a nice photogenic set. Now, as we pan up, you have got some bits and pieces in the attic space. And again, you've got all the different textures and all the different layers. Yes, that is a spider. And then you have got some other little bits and pieces just at the very, very top of the roof. But it was a little bit tricky to try and figure out the configuration online. But when you've got it in hand, it is super, super easy. But what we'll try and do is we'll go room by room. Now, this camera is scared of the dark we all know this it gives you a nice picture but it doesn't like darker spaces so I can see the back of that absolutely no problem but for some reason the camera isn't doing the greatest of jobs so hopefully when I watch this back it will be okay but we will start with all of this bits and pieces on the back and the nice thing is because you can obviously open this up and you can see you've got all of the different hinge points just here I think it's just so you can get good photos and you can actually see it from the side and it just gives you different lighting from different areas but across at the back just there you also have up at the very very top there Grumpy's own uh, he's got his own two spoons, he's got his fork, spoon, plate and cups on the back just there because it seems to be grumpy, must have his food by himself. Now if I do my very very best just to zoom out ever so slightly, get a little bit more light in that bit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to spin this all the way around like so and we go in from this angle like there. We will see what we'll pick up on this. I'm not holding my breath but you should now be able to see the back a little bit differently. And you can see you have got the water effect. So you can see the blue coming through. It's very, very easy to, it's very, very easy and clear to see in person, but I just don't know what this camera's picking up because it has a very, very small viewfinder. So you can see you've got all of the different colors up at the top. So you've got the green, red, yellow, and sort of like brown and blue, all for what is obviously their piano. And then you can, if you want to stand the minifigures up on this bit just here. And again, this is the side where you have the cool little bird box just up there. And again, that's a better look at the roofing. Loads and loads of different detail going on with that. It is a super, super sturdy structure. Now, again, this is that side of the window. So you can, if you want to, just open up those windows and you might be able to get some photos from the inside of that window. But overall, that room does look very effective. Now, I think if we spin this back round, we will carry on here because there's a lot going on with this. So you have got all of this detail of the tables and chairs. You've got all the bread, you've got all the cups. There are seven chairs around this, and then you have Grumpy's own little bits and pieces on the inside. Now that is um, all of the detail that is involved in that. I think we've seen absolutely everything from that room. So if it is a little bit too dark, hopefully I've explained everything that is there, but you have got all of this detail that is on the inside here. Now this is the bit with the light brick. So I place you down there and push the back just here. That does like, oh, broken it already that does light up nicely so you can see all of that flickering away in the background so that does give you the nice sort of fire and obviously you can heat up there's a little pot just on the inside so I get that chair out of the way there is a pot just up in there and that is doing its thing so obviously that is supposed to be heating up now these are easy enough to put together I don't know if I've just missed a piece or that bit has never been on but that should have a bit on there so I actually have forgotten to put a piece on so ignore that because that should be there I'm not taking that out because it is what it is but you can see all of this across up at the top and you have got all of that neat nice detail up at the back and then where the front door is if I was to actually we can push that open from here pull it open there you go so if I did that that might give a little bit more light on the situation you have got some of the little bits and pieces just up on there but overall there is a lot of detail within this room now moving up they have even more of these gems hidden within this box and they are in all sorts of different colors you get quite a few spares of those I'll put the spares in in a second so you can see exactly what's what and you do have a couple of these with the lids on where they have got more bits and pieces on as well but if I was to shut this and have it pulled back that is what that looks like at the very, very top. And then you've got the next room and then you've got the next bit on there. But don't forget, if you're going to split the roof panel on in your display case, you are not going to be able to see the bedroom. So if that is a scene that you like to see and you want to add in all of the minifigures on there, that now is the only way that you're going to see it. And again, if this then spun all the way around, that is more than likely 
if I clip it together, how you are going to be displaying it. That's how I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it completely straight like that. So you can see all of the different detail across the back. And it's sturdy enough when it's clipped together that you can just spin it around. And obviously that roof piece stays on. And then that is what that looks like again from the front. Like minifigure time for all of the sets. Starting with the Flintstones very, very quickly. And obviously we're going to start with Fred, aren't we? Beautiful orange, really nice pattern. You've got the really nice blue and obviously you've got the black. It does look very, very effective. And then he has his nice print on the back. And obviously the bare foot as well, don't forget. So you have then got all of the zigzag marks on the side of his, the bottoms, or his shorts, shall I say. But the nice thing is about that is that it is just a really good looking figure. Obviously from an icon set, it would have been something that probably would have made a CMF range as well. Now I don't know if some of these have dual faces. So we'll spin this one round. This one does not. So some of them do, some of them don't. And you can see just what the hair looks like from the very, very top on that. Now on to the better half, Wilma. She does look very, very good. You've got the pearls across the top and then you've got the nice little dress bit that cuts across the top there and then you've got the triangle bits that cut in and then obviously you've got the short marks there. Again, barefoot on this one. You have got a bit of a different skin tone on this one. You saw like the, almost like she's got undershorts on so you can see the darker darker pink going into more of the skin tone and then that wraps around all the way across the bottom so that does look very very effective all the way across there now with regards to the facial expressions on this one again i'm not too sure no this one does so some do have two some don't so she has that very very peculiar looking eyebrow and lip pattern on there and then you've got the happy face on this one so so far so good so we are two for two on this one moving on to the next one which is this one so if you don't know who this one is then you obviously have not seen the actual cartoon so we are now looking at barney and then we'll have the better half of rubble i do believe her name is i might need to double check that but i'm sure that is her name so we've got barney and rubble so this is barney so you have got the um, brown, you've got the nice little bit across at the top, and then you've got the facial expression on there, sort of like the cutting beard and the smiley face. You've got the deep sort of yellow blonde on this one, a slightly different yellow to the roof up on the top on there. And then you've got the plain brown across the back. And then you've got the cuttings, you almost got like the rips that are just all across the back. So there you go, if I get my arms out the light, you can see that a little bit better. We've got the rips across on there. Again, you've got the same pattern across the, on the, uh, the legs, so you can see You've got all of that detail and again you've got the little cut-ins up at the front facial you just have the one so it seems the guys have just the one i think the ladies have the two so his better half her she does look very very good you've got the really really nice bright vibrant blue again you've got the jewelry across the top of the neck and then you've got the triangular cut-ins very very similar patterns really aren't they with regards to where the, the placement is for those cuttings on those two side by side they obviously just change the printing and even the leg length is they've actually added in, in all fairness, a completely different pattern to the bottom. So they've added a higher zigzag on this one, not so much of a zigzag on this one, but they have added in that sort of two-tone again. So you've got the deeper pink with the lighter skin tone, and then across the back, you've got all the bits and pieces on the dress as she goes absolutely flying. So I've got my arm out of the way. There you go. So you can see the cut-ins, and you've got the bit that goes across the top of the neck. Then you have the, obviously, the black hair. Pop the hair off. You then have that face. So I don't know why they've got weird and wonderful expressions for the Flintstones minifigures, but they do look very, very good indeed. Now, moving on to the next lot. So we will have Winnie the Pooh. I'll just do Winnie the Pooh, and then we'll go online for the others. He does look very, very good. Obviously, he comes with all of his honey. You can see his tummy. That is out and you've got the nice red t-shirt and then across the back you've even got the short t-shirt again because he's just got a big dummy and then you have that little cutting across the top and you can see all of the details that is on there but now we'll jump to online into these super quickly starting with piglet you can see you've got the scarf and then you've got the nice little umbrella just on the side and it does pose very very nice you can take some nice photos of this one you get good angle on the head so that one turns nicely tigger again really nice print on the arms you've got the really nice print on the torso obviously you can if you're clever balance the minifigure on the tail as well which is quite handy and especially when you've got this up over the shoulder with the bag it does make, make it on a tip a little bit especially if you're trying to do photos from outside but the colors on each one of these minifigures are super bright and super vibrant just like we saw with the Winnie the Pooh minifigure in person now the one that I, I'm really struggling to actually find in my collection is Eeyore I don't know where this one's gone but you can see on the face you've got the really nice pattern across the face and you've got the really sad look on the eyes but you have got the nice little bow on the side and you've got the nice little purple definition mixed in with the blue and you've got all the little hair up top and then obviously you've got the rabbit so you've got the bunny cool little print up on the ears you've got the nice facial print as well and then obviously you've got the carrot that it comes with so that is a super super short quick version of all five of these 
because now we're going to spend a huge amount of time having a look at all of the new Snow White minifigures. So we have now reached the section of this minifigure segment of minifigures. I have absolutely no idea who any of these are. Now I can cheat because I have the box beside me and I almost refuse to say what each one of these names are because I don't know who they are. But I was going to call this one Violet, but we are looking at Dopey. Now Dopey has a dual face like all of them do, but... This is where they get a little bit weird and wonderful. The facial expressions on these are completely different to anything that I have seen before. So you've got the kiss mark on the top of this one. And then on the back you have... Well, that's gone forever. That has just flown through the back. That's, that's gone well over a metre. So you knew what you had. I will try and find that at some point. Um, Yes, so the facial expressions on these are very, very over-exaggerated. They do look nice, they've got some nice torso print. I just don't know about the facial expressions. I guess they've gone much more cartoon-based, maybe? So, because I haven't seen it, I don't know how accurate it is. But obviously, if it's supposed to be like that, then absolutely perfect. And you can see, if you put the hat on the wrong way round, it almost, almost covers all the face. So not quite. So if you were to get photos from the back, you just have to be a little bit clever with the angle. And then obviously, that is what that one looks like from the front. So we are one for one as a catastrophe so far. Now we're moving on to the next one. So we are moving on to Doc. So this is Doc. Can't tell you anything about Doc, but this is how Doc looks like. So you have got all the different bits and pieces with regards to the printing on the front of this one. So you can see you've got the really nice buttons and then you've got the belt buckle and if I push him down hard enough he has got obviously a slightly brown tone leg on this one. Now they have not added the bendy legs which I was hoping that they would do because I was hoping to sit these minifigures down in a roller coaster so I'm going to have to find the legs because I thought they might have been and they're not. They are on the solid mini legs but again if I get this from the back and get the light on you can see just how bright and vibrant hopefully the red is and you have got the almost the untucked shirt effect coming out across the top and then you have got the bit just here. Now all of these get put together exactly the same. You have got a hat, you have got dual face so you can see what that is the other facial expression. You've got the nice happy face from that one or you've just got the smiley face and then you have this bit now obviously that is the way that they've got to go because if you put that upside down you can't see anything so they don't go there it's not like a father christmas beard they just go upside down but all they're covering is the very very top so all of these have slightly different print across the top and i think most of them actually have this thing over it as well and like i said you get pretty much a minifigure a bag so you're not doing too bad with those he says as you can try and get the hat on this one though from the front, covers everything with that, but from the back, actually you know it does. So this one does cover everything on the back, so this one just obviously dopey, just had a much, much larger facial expression where you can still see the bottom of his smile on there. So that is what they are looking like so far, and I think they do look quite smart. Now it's, I'm just grabbing these to my left hand side. As I pull them out, I am looking at the box. I had, like I said, when I actually did the unboxing of, I say the unboxing, the actual reveal of this online, I couldn't tell you a single character, and without looking at the box, I still can't, but this is apparently Grumpy, so Grumpy everybody, this is what he looks like, does, does not look a happy chappy, does he? So he has a very, very grumpy face on the back just there, and then as we spin the minifigure around... He also has a, even more of a... He almost looks evil on that one. So what we'll do, we'll spin him round to just more of a grumpy face like that. Now, I think the... Obviously, the beard... I say the beard. The I guess it might be the beard or whatever they're supposed to be on this is a much, much larger element than this one. But because the, uh, the element is much, much larger, and I have to keep getting my hands out of the way because the lighting, it does cover all the torso. So again, with that... That is what that looks like for the actual print. So you can see you've got all the nice detail and everything on the front of that one. And then as we wrap it around, you just have the basic bit on the back. But if we get the really evil looking thing across the back, and then the hats actually go on reverse, don't they? That's why I keep getting it wrong. So if we put it on like that. Oh, they, oh no, I wasn't getting it wrong. Each hat 
also goes on differently. So you can see what they look like together. And then again, that one with the hat is completely upright and we are basically learning as we go. So like I said, some of them will have their pickaxes in front of them, like this one that is coming. Whereas these, well, he did, he's lost his. Those two have their bits and pieces in the actual house. So I'm moving on to the next one. I didn't even look at the box. So I'm assuming, what's he got? He's got, I've had an accident brown trousers. Sneezy, no? I actually have no idea who this is supposed to be. I think it might be Sneezy. Can I turn this one round? No, it's not Sneezy. This is this has got embarrassing very, very quickly, and I am not taking this one out. Bright yellow top or oh, bashful. We are bashful. There we go. Again, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about. So this is bashful. You have got the little legs. Again, I wish they bent though. So with regards to this, I'm going to have to take these off every single time. You can see you have got the really nice print on the front of this one. So just there you have got all the really really nice silver so hopefully that is coming through cleanly and clearly enough and then you've got the belt buckle and everything that comes across the front and then you have got the open collar on this one so every one is completely different i would imagine that these are going to be worth an absolute fortune at some point but that is the headpiece number one he says is he want to refuses to stand up so that is the headpiece number one and then facial expression number two is just the big happy smile which i think looks nice so we'll have this one and again this hat piece will go on like so so that is four down i do believe so we are motoring through now we have one with orange arms and a blue midriff as that happens i can now look at the box there we go this is now happy so there we go so we can we can take a look at happy and then actually see how happy chappy he is with regards to the facial expression on the other side so hat comes off some of them have also got nice eyebrow print as well just in case i have not mentioned that so this one is slightly different that is not the greatest of facial expressions i don't think i think that one is just a bit of a weird looking one whereas this one all oh, the legs seem to be very very stiff that is how this one looks like now again with regards to the printing on the front you don't have any buttons on this one so this is just all the brown and then you've got the bright gold belt buckle but the orange does look very very effective on the both sides of the arms but the, with the guys too happy he has a very cheeky chappy grin or looks like he's been stung by a wasp i would imagine so big difference is again rather than the facial expression is actually the teeth so that one has no teeth and that one has a tooth maybe with his tongue sticking out so again something i've never ever seen with regards to this sort of dramatic facial print before growing on me though i think it's i think it works well i guess this is just part of the animation so it does it does work well now we have two more to go so out of elimination if you know who is left luckily i was about to say is this is there a is there a sneezy i think i said the only reason why i think i know that sneezy is i said it and it wasn't sneezy and i'm pretty sure that is a very very accurate expression for a sneeze so that one works perfectly fine so that is that one that spins around for that one and he's it looks like he is in mid sneeze so we have about to sneeze and full-blown sneeze on that one so that is those two with regards to, again, the print on the back, nice and simple, nice and basic with the bits and pieces with all like the shirt texture and everything, they do look nice. And then you have got, I'm not gonna take this one off, you've just got the, the buttons across with the touch. You know, he, has, he is different, again, they are all different. So you can see what that one looks like up at the top with regards to the open collar and the buttons. It does look a pretty cool minifigure actually. The facial expression on that one works very, very well. I think some are better than others. Now this one, again, with regards to the size of the pickaxe, they have got full size minifigure pickaxes with the short-term minifigures. Now, talking of minifigures, I, again, no idea. I haven't looked at the box, and I could not tell you who that is. And the problem is, it's the last one. Uh, uh, I'm guessing it's Sleepy. It's got to be Sleepy. So that is, it's got to be asleep on the back. There we go. I would have got it if it was that facial expression. So that is a beautiful, uh, yeah, I would say it's more of a sleeping face and a singing face. But the cool thing is on this one, you can see you've got the tooth at the bottom, you've got the tongue, and then you've got the eyes, obviously, which are 
I guess he's snoring actually, so that would look quite nice in the um, in the bed. So you can just tuck him in to sleep. With regards to the print and everything on the front, again, they've all been different. That is what that one looks like on the front. So you've got the really nice looking buttons, and then you've got the open collar, and then well, we can have him. He always looks drowsy there, doesn't he? So let's let's just have him. Let's just have him like that. Let's get this all. Oh dear. Let's get him all put. That went doubly wrong because not only did I break him, the battery ran out at the same time. So he is now all back together. Now it does feel like we've been going forever with these minifigures because there is lots of them. But let's group these minifigures together so you can just see what these look like. Because in all seriousness, as a group, they do look very very good so you can see there is two four five six and the crazy one at the back is number seven so that is all of those together now hopefully you can see them all what if i stagger them like that that does look quite smart so again you can see what they look like in front of the cottage it is a nice looking thing however we still have three more. Now we've got the villain. Now apparently the villain is the evil queen in disguise, which is her. So this is what she looks like. So if I just... It would have been quite nice having them as a backdrop, but I don't want the camera to focus on those. Now that is what she looks like. Now with regards to her, you can see you have got the really evil expression, the evil tooth, and then obviously you've got that open mouth. Now with the print, nice and simple, you've got the white going across the top, and then you have got all of these. Now apparently, and this isn't my knowledge, the character that you need is from one of the CMFs. So if you wanted the actual Evil Queen herself, you can get her from the Disney CMF range if you wanted to, and then obviously you can add her into that. But again, you can see what that looks like with regards to the facial expression. So you've got the much more open mouth, that's stiff, and then you've got that one as well. In fact, I think what we'll do is we might keep her like that because she looks very, very crazy. Now she has also got what I think, is a new element which is this now i haven't seen this before and it's very very rubberized actually it's not that much of a hard hard plastic at all and it does grip okay it's hard to get in hand very difficult to get in hand but when it's on it's in so that's not exactly ideal because it's the wrong way around but you know what i'm trying to do and then that will fit in there so that is that so she does look nice now we have to have a quick look at the print now that print where have i just put him there he is so we have him so i'm not putting the capes on they are in the brand new in the box and they are ready to go they are just in here so there are two of them in there you got her white one and he's got sort of a brown cape to put on so they are there ready but it's just much easier as you can see if i didn't put the white bits on those we would have flown through them a little bit quicker but without the cape he does look a little bit plain on the back so it's not actually hiding that much but you do have the two-tone leg print on the back so you've got the brown with the lighter blue which does look very very smart and then as we spin it around onto the front you have got a lot going on with this minifigure because you have again you've got the brown the lighter blue you've got the much then deeper blue with the gold and then you've got all of the nice detail on the middle you've got the blue the brown and you've got the bits and pieces going across the sort the chest and then you've got the arm as well now i need to grab snow white so wheat need to grab snow white that's very northern and i need to get her out of her sleeping tomb and do a comparison with the disney castle version so this is the disney castle version that is why it looks like with the cape so that's simple enough now i say cape her little over shoulder dress now these is the two now on the website it looked like her midriff was a much brighter yellow. However, it's not in person. It is exactly the same minifigure. Now, the only thing that would make it different is her facial expression, which it doesn't. So this figure that you get in both sets is an identical Snow White. They've got the same print all across the side. It's the same print on the back, and she has got the same shocked face on there as well so we've already seen we've already seen what that looks like on there now with regards to the print on this one it is very very smart because you can see you've got all of the silver gold speckles on the front i say silver they're all golden and then on the side you've got the really nice print on the sleeve and then you've got the nice print on the back as well and then that just carries on to the side and then goes on to the front so both of them do look nice and that is what those two look like together now with regards to scale you can go away if i put all of these now together so we can start to wrap this up that is what they look like 
all together with those. So you can see there is a, a lot of minifigures included within this set. In fact, we will add her. She will stand. There we go. And we'll add him at the back. But that is every single minifigure that you get included within this set. And I think that set does look very, very good. So before we start to wrap it up, we will use a couple of sets for scale. Now we're starting off with the A-frame cabin trees, which do, I think, work very, very well. So if you wanted to hide your cottage a little bit more, then obviously you can do quite easily with some of the other sets that are already available, or you can obviously just customize your own trees. But I think as a display already, that would look quite nice on the shelf. Moving on to the next thing, and I've got the Rivendale. Now I've taken it apart especially, and you can see what this now looks like. So if you were thinking of maybe having a weird and wonderful walk through the forest and then you end up by the Snow White's cottage, that is what that looks like for scale. Now they are not far off whatsoever. This thing is surprisingly big when you start putting it beside all of the other sets. And obviously it's got quite a few pieces included as well. But I think those two side by side could also work quite nicely. Just as an aerial shot for sizing of all three of these sets before we start to wrap it up, that is what they look like side on. So that is the width or the height of both of those, obviously sideways. And then if we were to spin this one round on itself, which I'm going to do very, very carefully, that is then how that would slot in. And then that is what it looks like for width. So you can display that quite a fair few ways if you wanted to. And obviously these, depending on how it is that you want to do it, will look very, very good side by side. But clearly, that is the much better way to display it. The Flintstones one doesn't really work, but again, starting how we finished or finished how we started, having those two side by side, and I think a lot of people would have seen the Winnie the Pooh built up in store. I think that might be the easiest thing to show off for scale. But guys, that is it. I am done. So if you can like this video and subscribe to the channel, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Let us know in the comments below what your favorite set is, and more importantly, what your favorite minifigure is as well. But as always, thank you very much for watching. You lot take care and we'll catch you next one. Ta-da.